you start by measuring out maximum length that you'll need. My lathe has a swing of 16 inches, so I'm never going to turn anything any bigger than that. So I'm going to make this at about, say, 19 inches. That gives me a little bit to cut up this knot and still get all this nice figure. High end handsaw a la James Wright. I'm going to run this across my jointer. This isn't a critical step for a high precision instrument such as this. Just marking the longest axis of the board and that's where I'm going to draw my pattern. And I'm going to mark the center point. I'm going to use metric because Metric is easier to do math, and I'm Canadian, so why not? That's my center point right there. I have a bit of quarter inch plywood with a string on it, just to give me a bit of a drawing bow here, kind of give myself a bit of a curve. Since this is more of a prototype than anything, I'm just going to eyeball everything. And if it's a little bit asymmetrical, I'm not going to complain too much. So I happen to have a small scrap of this obscenely hard red hardwood from a pallet. I have no idea what it is. Extremely dense and heavy and I think it'll work perfect for the center rod. So the next step now is then to mortise out a little through mortise this to go through and act as your depth gauge. Again I'm not being picky right now because like I said this isn't a super well it is a super precision instrument, you know. You can measure down to the thousandths of a kilometer at the very least. I'm going to hog out the bulk of the waste with my uh, super high-end drill press here. Now back to the bench. Small chisel it is. That's the problem with uh, using scraps, I suppose. I'm going to go for a slightly undersized hole because I'm going to cut a relief cut and then put a bolt through it to provide tension and that's what will hold it in place. So I don't want to cut it out perfectly. and then flip over and repeat on the other side. Now it's time to cut it out. Now to put the relief cut. Now if I had been smart, or lent, depending on how you look at it, I would have used a quarter inch dowel instead of this. Then I could have just drilled the hole, put the dowel in, and been done. That's what I recommend you do. Because now I'm stuck finessing the fit so it actually slides through. So I recommend you learn from my mistakes. All this is an opportunity to make shavings, I suppose. So after realizing I'd messed up the orientation on my piece of wood that I was for my depth gauge, I decided to heed my own advice and I went and grabbed a piece of 15 16 rod and now I'm going to mark some graduations on it.
So instead of the weird unknown hardwood that uh, wrecks my tools, uh, this is just quarter sawn red oak. So taking advantage of my past mistakes, I've now decided to pre-drill for my set screw before I do any cutting. In Now to cut out the shape. And cutting the relief cut in. So after a quick test fit, the rod's still too big to fit through that hole even with the relief cut. I did that deliberately so we could not have too loose. So now I'm going to drill a slightly bigger hole and retest it. So I did a test fit, had to thin that down just a little bit. That's basically it. So the carriage bolt goes through there, wing nut goes on there. The rod goes through there. And you can tighten the wing nut down. And that won't move at all. So the way this works is you set the gauge to the depth of your material. And then the reason I put the notches on there is so you can kind of gauge how deep your mortise is. You can then loosen that off and you can back that off and then another half centimeter. And that's how deep you can turn for a half centimeter thick bottom.